crafty friends it's caroline and i am back today with week four of sandy's 13 frights before halloween and these last three weeks have just been full of so many amazing projects by all of these wonderful contributors i've had to pinch myself i can't believe i'm even included in this bunch of very talented ladies this week's tutorial is for this great little activity booklet it's perfect if you have kids with allergies food allergies that maybe can't have candy that was manufactured in a facility that also handles nuts, which seems to be all the Halloween candy these days. Or if you're just trying to cut down on all the sugar, because it's a lot of sugar involved in trick-or-treating, it's a great little way to hand out a treat that is a non-sugar-based treat. And it opens up like this, and there are these wonderful little booklets included in the free PDF cutting guide for this week's project. So you can download those and print them out. You could make them into this booklet that we have the tutorial for, or you could just staple them together and hand them out as little individual booklets as well. I hope you've all subscribed and click the bell notifications for all the other contributors. There's so much talent in this group. I just can't believe it. And click on the hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022 so you can see all the projects that are being posted, even by people who aren't necessarily involved in the collaboration because Sandy has an open collaboration aspect that allows for you to post whatever you've been inspired by over these last few weeks. As we're inching towards fall, I'm getting so excited excited. We're finally getting a respite from the heat here in Oklahoma. And as you may be able to hear in the background, we've even got some rain, which oh, it's been absent for way too long. So I'm very excited about that. And I'm really excited to show you this project today. My son helped me develop these little booklets and that was a special time to spend with him. So this one's a little near and dear to my heart. All right, y'all, let's get into it. To begin, we are going to need a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. Now, this is going to make three of these little notebooks or activity books, right? So if you only want to make a single one, then you would begin with a piece that is four inches by 12 inches. Because I want to make enough for my son's classroom, then I'm doing this in bulk, right? So I want to make quick work of this. And I have found that if I score once, for what will become three pieces, you know, three different um, sections, then that saves me a lot of time. So for me, I'm going to begin with a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. If you are wanting to only make one, then you would begin with a piece of four by 12 cardstock, and you're gonna score in the same way on the 12 inch side. And as always, there is an accompanying cutting guide that is available on my website as a free PDF download that will have all these measurements on there. On the 12 inch side, you you are going to score at one half inch, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, and then you're going to make a series of score marks between five inches and seven inches. You're going to score every quarter of an inch going between the five inches and seven inches mark. So you're going to score at five, five and a quarter, five and a half, five and three quarters, six, six and a quarter, six and a half six and three quarters and seven. And then you're gonna score at 10 and one eighth. I'll hold this down straight here. <laughs> and 10 and three eighths, okay? And so those are our score marks that we're gonna make. Again, I'm doing this for three. If you're doing it for a single one, you would put it on the 12 inch side, a piece of four by 12. In an attempt to make light work of this, I'm going to fold and burnish all of my score marks at the same time because then I've done it once instead of three times. For the series of score marks that are between the five and seven inch mark, that series of one quarter inch space score marks, we're gonna fold those accordion style, beginning and ending with a mountain fold. Now, that's eventually gonna be turned around like this, and so it's actually gonna be a valley fold on the other side. But the way we're looking at the paper here, and this is in the order that we just scored it in, where we've got the one half inch, the inch and three eighths, the inch and seven eighths, the, then the series from five to seven, and so on and so forth. We are going to fold that beginning mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain valley, mountain. So it's gonna begin and end with a mountain fold on those. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish those and I'll be right back. And now that we have folded and burnished all of our accordion folds as well as our other score marks, it's time to go ahead and cut this into thirds. So we've made light work of the scoring and the folding and the burnishing by doing it all at once. And I'm sort of flatten, flattening it out just a little bit just so that I can get a straight cut. 
I'm simply gonna place my paper in my paper cutter here, and I'm gonna cut it at four inch intervals. So um, we're gonna get three four inch by 12 inch long pieces out of this one. And now we have three bases cut, scored, folded, and burnished ready to make. The next step is going to be making a couple marks from which we are gonna make a couple cuts. So the first thing to do is to locate the, the side with the three score marks and the side with the two score marks on the edges, okay? And so on this side here, we're gonna place that on our left-hand side, and this is the one with the score marks at one half inch, one and three eighths, and one and seven eighths. And on this side here, we're gonna make a couple marks. We're gonna place our ruler along that first score mark there at the half inch mark. And I'm using a centering ruler so that I can find the center. And so I've got two inches on either side. This is four inches tall, right? And I am going to make a mark at a half an inch on either side of that center point. So I've got a one inch section here in the center that's spaced in the center of this four inch, you know, tall piece of, of paper here. So I've come down an inch and a half from the top and an inch and a half up from the bottom, and that's leaving me with a one inch section here. And I'm gonna do that on the first and the second score marks. And so I have a couple marks just like this, and I'm just gonna connect those two lines on either side, okay? And we're gonna cut out this center section here and be left with a piece that sort of looks like an H. You can use scissors, you can use a finger blade or an X-Acto knife, it really doesn't matter. We're just simply gonna cut on these score marks up to that point that we've, we drew. And then we're gonna connect the two cuts to cut out this rectangle here. And then we're left with this piece, piece that kind of looks like an H, okay? And now the next series of marks and cuts that we're gonna make is on the side to the right of that where there's the two score marks here, the ones that we scored at 10 and an eighth and 10 and three eighths. I'm gonna place my ruler, I'm gonna place the quarter inch line on that last score mark we made here. So the, the one that's furthest to the right, the one that we made at the 10 and three eighths inch mark. And I'm gonna, I'm using my centering ruler, so I'm finding the center here and I'm placing it on the quarter inch mark. So this point here, that's a quarter of an inch line, I'm placing on that score mark. So the mark I'm gonna be making is a quarter of an inch to the right of that last score mark that we just made. And we're gonna do it from one, two, three, four, five eighths of an inch up from the center to one, two, three, four, five eighths of an inch down from the center, okay? So we've got a mark just like that. Then we're gonna come over another quarter of an inch, again, centering my line here, and I'm gonna make a, a parallel mark that's also 5 eighths of an inch up and down from the center there. And then we're just gonna connect those lines, and this is little rectangle shape here is what we're going to cut out. Now on this one, I do prefer to use my X-Acto blade, but you can use scissors. You could simply just puncture a hole, and if you were gonna do the scissors, I would cut to each corner like this. Get in here. So I'm cutting from wherever my puncture was at an angle up to the corner marks. And then from there, it would be very easy to simply cut off those uh, little triangles that are sort of created at that point. I'm gonna finish it up with finger blade because it's just my preference. But I just wanted to show you that if you were gonna use scissors, um, I think that's the easiest way to do it is to come at an angle into those corner points there. So now that we've made the cuts on each side here, we're ready to begin putting some pattern paper on here. And I've got three pieces of solid colored cardstock that measure two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. I have one piece that measures two and a half by three and seven eighths. I have two pieces that measure one and a half by three and seven eighths. I have one piece that is three eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths, and two pieces that are one eighth of an inch by three and seven eighths. And those are what we're gonna use to cover our little booklet here. To begin, I like to start to, first of all, this is, it helps to kind of see how this is gonna be oriented, right? So this is gonna open up from the right-hand side. So the side here with this rectangle is gonna be on the right-hand side, okay? And so I'm gonna position my pattern paper so that if you have directional paper, I wanna go ahead and mark which is the top. 
And so that's the top here, okay? This is also the top. And that's gonna help me to know where my directional paper needs to go. So I'm gonna glue this one on this little um, section here that is this little inch and five eighths inch section here that um, is that has the rectangle cut out of it. We're gonna glue our one and a half inch by three and seven eighths inch pieces on that, but I'm not gonna glue them both at the same time because I need to be able to see this rectangle that I cut out. So I'm gonna glue the first one down. Then once that's down, I'm gonna turn it over and I can see the opening and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that rectangle again. And then once that's cut out, now we can go ahead and put more pattern paper than on the inside and we can cut it out again from the backside. These 1 8 of an inch strips are gonna go on the gusset here on this right hand side, both on the inside and the outside pieces. And then we're going to create a loop here for our pencil, which is also gonna serve as the way that we um, close our notebook. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna turn it over, so this is the inside, right? I'm gonna turn it to the outside so that my top is still at the top and my H is now on the right hand side. And I'm gonna place some glue on that outermost section there of my H, the right hand side of my H. and then just meet it with the other scored section, which is the other leg of the H, okay? So I've rolled it over. I'm not creasing this. This is gonna be a, a pencil loop, but I'm just sort of rolling it over onto itself. So I've met both legs of the H on top of each other. And then I'm gonna put more glue on that section we just glued down, and we're gonna roll it over a second time. So we've sort of folded the H over on itself, and then we're just gonna fold this section over on itself, just like that. Make sure you burnish it down really well. It's a lot of paper there. Squeezing out any that may wanna seep out the, the top and the bottom or the sides. And I'm just cleaning it up here with my bone folder or with my finger, no big deal. And so now this is gonna be our pencil loop. We wanna go ahead and, and make sure that our pencil is gonna fit in here. Slide our pencil in, there we go. And aren't these cute? We're gonna make these next. And so now we know that that's just the right size here. Our pencil fits in perfectly and that's great. Now it's time to go ahead and put some more pattern paper on. We're gonna take um, the piece that measures two and a half inches by three and seven eighths and we're gonna glue that just to the left of our pencil loop. And then we have our piece that is 3 eighths of an inch by three and seven eighths, and we're gonna glue that down onto the, um, the little section over here to the right of our pencil loop. Once those are done, we're gonna go to our three pieces of solid cardstock that measure two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, and we're simply gonna glue those down into the panel areas that remain. So there's one on the outer portion here, and then there's two on the inside here. And once those are in place, now our cover is ready for us to insert our little booklets. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna move on to those. In the accompanying cutting guide, you will have these printouts here of the booklets that I have made for this little, you know, this little, this little book, this little activity book. When yeah. folded up, these booklets are gonna include a Would You Rather series of book, a booklet, a Let's Count with, with Count Dracula booklet, there's a booklet of riddles, there's a booklet of multiplication, and then there's a booklet of writing prompts. So there's a little beginning of a story and then they're prompted to finish the story in these little booklets. And I have printed these out on 65 pound cardstock. That's what this is here. But I wanted to show you, if you wanted to print them on just regular you know, copy, paper weight, they will print out. The one thing I will say is that there is a little bit of bleed through. I think you can see here, there's a little bit of bleed through from the writing on the other side, but it's really not a big deal and you could easily do that. In fact, if it weren't something that I was filming, I probably would have just put them on the copy weight paper because the kids don't care. Um, but for the camera purposes, I know it was really picking up that bleed through a lot. And so I went ahead and printed it on the 65 pound cardstock just to, you know, eliminate that, right? And once you print them out, you're gonna print them out double-sided 
with the binding on the long edge. So portrait style double sided. That's what's going to line up so that these will print on the correct side um, when you print it double sided. So if you print them through and they're not coming out correctly, check and make sure that you have it portrait instead of landscape binding on your um, on the double sided print setting and it should work out just fine for you. And then all we're going to do is simply cut these out. Now there's one section here that these pages are intended to go like this and then there's one that's like that's like this so there you've got a vertical and a horizontal and I did that just so that I could get more on the pa paper <laughs> I wanted to get as much out of it as I could and so I'm going to cut really you know fairly close to the line over here on this section and then I'm going to flip it over and I know this needs to be five and seven eighths inches wide so then I'm just going to cut it again if I cut off the lines again it doesn't really matter I'm going to do the same thing down here on the bottom lines, but this time I'm going to cut it at three and seven eighths inches tall. So when cutting out these page groupings, they're going to be cut where they're five and eighths, five and seven eighths inches wide and three and seven eighths inches tall. And I'm going to do that for all of the little page sections and I'll be right back. Now that we have our page sections, our, our little page couples here, cut into sections that are five and seven eighths inches wide by three and seven eighths inches tall, it's time for us to put them together and just fold them in the booklet format, right? So just make sure that, you know, they're they're oriented correctly, that you don't have them going in upside down. And then they're just going to be folded in half on the five and eight, five and seven eighths inch side, <laughs> just like that. So we're going to fold all of our booklets together. And now I have all of my little booklets folded in their little sections and I've put them in the order that I want to use them. And now it's time for us to attach them into our book cover here, our activity book cover. Now I am using a long arm stapler. If you don't have a long arm stapler, you can do this with a needle and thread or you don't really even necessarily have to do it like this at all. You could staple these together individually and simply glue them in. You'll see what I mean by that when we get to the attachment system here. But um, I, the long arm stapler is great. If you don't have one, I do think they're worth getting. They're, they're very inexpensive and they come in handy for a lot of different things. So that's what I'm using here. And so we've got our little booklet open to the inside. The front cover is the piece with the rounded portion that's going to hold the pencil right so we're going to open it up like that and I'm going to place you know the first booklet that I want to use right inside I'm going to nestle it into that first valley fold there so remember we folded it from this side and we had we began and ended with a mountain fold well that correlates to a valley fold on the inside and so I'm just going to place that edge that we just folded right inside of that valley fold okay and once I've got it lined up, I'm going to take a couple little clips just to hold it in place so it doesn't wiggle around on me. Turn it over. I'm going to place it in my long arm stapler. And when I do this, I've, I really need to, so the, the front of the stapler isn't where the staple comes out. The staple comes out just a little bit behind there. I think, can you see that? I think you can see that. So the staple comes out just about an, I don't even think it's quite an eighth of an inch behind there. And this is a feel thing. This is something I would say practice on a piece of paper first. I kind of know where it's gonna fall into place here. And so I'm gonna come right along that, that fold line and align it so that my staples are gonna come out right along that fold line and just press it down. And I'm off a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> It really doesn't matter. I'm going to come to the other side, do the same thing. I'm trying to get as close as I can. That one's a little bit better. So this is why practicing helps. <laughs> and then I'm going to take those off. Go ahead and close up that page. Come to the second one. Place it in the next little valley here that we've got. So lining the pages up with the one before. When I open it up, my little my fold line is in that second valley there. And I'm lining it up so my pages, my tops and bottoms are kind of lined up with the one, you know, the one I just entered in, the booklet that I just stapled in. Go ahead and put some more little clips on here, you know, clothes pins, clamps, whatever you've got. Place it in, and this time I'm going to offset where I'm going to put my staples. So the first one I went to the outside, and this is going to be two that are going to be kind of to the inside. And when I mean inside, I mean closer to the center from top to bottom 
and these are closer to the outer part from top to bottom. And I'm gonna continue to line up the next booklet in the next little groove, the next little accordion groove, the, the valley one. Put some clamps on it just to hold it into place. Place it back in my stapler. And this time, again, I'm alternating. So this time I'm gonna go towards the outside portion, um, the top and bottom. Get the other one here. Okay. So just continue on in that same way. Get the next one. I'm gonna line it up in the valley again lining it up with the pages before place the clamp on put it back in the stapler and again i'm alternating so this one i'm coming on towards the kind of the inside section here there we go and then we're now we're down to our last one We've got our witchy writing prompts and that's going to go in this very last valley section here right before the cover lining it up placing on my clamps and this is just easier for me than holding it in place you don't have to clamp it i just i'm kind of klutzy and so i wanted to have some assurances that it was being held into place correctly go ahead and staple that one and now we've got all of our booklets attached in here on this accordion you know, section here of our spine, right? So now what we need to do is we need to sort of refold this accordion. What I would like to do is I like to gather up all of the edges of the booklets here, hold them in place, and I think it's just easier to sort of work them in to kind of remind it that that's a valley fold going in between them and then squeeze it all together. Okay, and so that's our spine, basically. Now I wanna hold it again at the, at the ends of the pages here so that it allows it to open up a little bit. And I'm gonna take my glue bottle and I'm just gonna run a bead of glue. Well, if it'll come out. I'm just gonna run a bead of glue right down the center of each of those valley folds, okay? So there's four valley folds here. I'm gonna run a bead of glue four times down there. Squeezing it back together, I'm gonna to take my heavy duty clamps this time and I'm gonna place three of them on there. One at the top, one at the bottom, and one sort of angled on the center. Every time I try to put it straight across the center, it sort of pops off on me. So I found if I angle it in there, it stays in place. And I'm gonna set that aside because that really needs to sit like that for, for a good minute here. <laughs> I need that glue to really have contact and sort of come together because there's a lot of bulk in there that's trying to push those accordion folds apart. And there's even some staples in there that are sort of getting in the way and wanting to do that. So I need those clamps to stay on there for a bit. In the interim, we are gonna work on making our little pencils because they're so cute. So you can find packages of pencils like this at the Target Dollar Spot, at the Dollar Tree, at all sorts of inexpensive, you know, little places. They're seasonal. I think I picked these up a couple years ago. Um, there were some Halloween ones. And I've also got some Christmas ones here. And so they're just really kind of nice to have. But these little booklets are only four inches tall and the pencils are much larger than that. So I am gonna use these cupcake picks that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna create a little decorative element with them and also just sort of make it so that cutting down the pencil in half doesn't look weird. It looks like it's supposed to be that way. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start with my pencil here and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the eraser right at the metal tip. I have found that using my finger blade works great. I'm simply gonna lay the blade right there next to that metal tip and just sort of roll it forward with the, the blade is sinking in ever so slightly with each roll as I, as I move the pencil forward. And I'll get like two or three, maybe four circles around there. And then it's loose enough that I can just break it off. Okay, and so we're just gonna throw this eraser away. 
And then these pencils, you may have to measure yours, they may be a little bit different, but these pe pencils, it's six and three quarters of an inch left on the pencil once I've cut off the eraser end. So I need to come over three and three eighths of an inch for, you know, to be able to cut it in half. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm using my mat to start the cut and then I'm just gonna roll it forward on my mat, just allowing the blade to sink in where it needs to. Once I've gotten a full circle around, the blade sort of finds the groove that we're making as we're going. And again, once I've done that like three or four turns, it is to a point where I can just break it apart, okay? If you have some really, you know, rough edges, you can always take your blade and kind of, you know, uh, shave it down a little bit, but it's usually I haven't had any issues with it. Now we're going to attach our decorative elements to the top. These picks come with the top is glued onto this long toothpick shape, and I'm just taking a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm wiggling it back and forth slightly, and that's going to come out. If for some reason the, the portion of the wood pick remains in there, it's totally fine. You can also just cut them off. But I found that it was really simple to just hold my pliers on there, give it a little wiggle, and then it comes right out. I have found that it's easier to sharpen the pencil before attaching these. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pencil sharpener out here and just you know sharpen one side of them. And then we're going to take a dollop of glue on the back end here you know, pretty decent sized dollop of glue. Just let that sort of set there for a second. And then I'm gonna place my little decorative top here. In this case, it's the jack-o'-lantern on top. And then I am wrapping it with some, some, you know, baker's twine. I found that that just gives a little bit of strength to it. I'm dragging the baker's twine through the hot glue first, holding my thumb in place, and then I'm just gently coming around, sort of getting it embedded into some of the glue that's seeping down as I go. And if I find that I need a little bit more glue, I can come in here and put another little dab. I'm not even squeezing it, I'm just using what's sort of leaking out of there. Kind of coming around here. And I have this little tool that I like to use. Um, use whatever you have a you know, honestly, those those wooden skewers that we just sort of cut off, those would work too. And I'm just dragging any excess glue that may have seeped out between that, um, kind of spreading it out and creating a surface here that is um, that gives some structure to the end of this so that that's not going to go anywhere. Okay, so we've got that one done. Let's do the next one. Go ahead and put a, a nice little dollop of hot glue here on the top, right? Kind of looks like a glass bead sitting up there. We're going to press our decorative element into that hot glue, which is going to make it sort of seep out a little bit. I'm going to drag my, my little string kind of through that glue to get a little bit of adhesive on the end of it. And then I'm going to make sure it stays straight. Oh, we wiggled him. There we go. You have a little bit of time before the glue totally sets, um, but I do think it's important to try to get it as centered as possible. <laughs> and then if I need a little bit more glue, I'm just going to use the little bit that's sort of dripping out here. Touch that little spot continue to wrap it around and then when it gets to the point where it's a little too short for me to hold I do like to use a tool because I don't want to burn myself <laughs> and you can use the little um what are they the little like finger protector things I think it's like a silicone finger protector that helps I have just found that as long as I have a little tool that I can spread that glue around with I'm doing pretty good and so there we've got our pencils taken care of now our book binding has had time to set it's it's nice and and where it needs to be it's nice and cured there's going to be a little bit of glue seeping out the top and bottom i just clean that up you know just sort of peel it off now we're going to wrap our spine with a piece of ribbon and this was some ribbon that i bought from hobby lobby i had a haul a while back and this was in the wedding section i believe 
So don't be afraid to check the other sections and stores for interesting ribbons. I thought this was kind of neat. It's a sort of crinkly, silvery, it's sort of jagged, and I thought it was pretty neat for Halloween. And so this is gonna close up like this. The pencil is what holds the book together, it's sort of like what binds it together like that in the front, it's, it, that's our closure. And now I'm gonna run a bead of glue, and I'm using the hot glue right along the edge of the pattern paper on the front side of the spine. This is really hot. I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm gonna sort of drag it through once to get the edges coated. And then I'm gonna come back in about a quarter of an inch into the front of the book. If you get these little strings from the hot glue, it's fine, you'll be able to clean them off later. Press it in, again, be careful if it's really hot. You know you know, you know what you can handle. I always say I have asbestos fingers. I spend a lot of time working in kitchens and <laughs> around hot things, so I, it doesn't really bother me, but please be careful. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put a little bead of hot glue about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the ribbon again, and just roll it over lightly till it catches hold, okay? And then once it's sort of cooled enough that I can touch it, I'm squeezing that glue to the edge of the ribbon. So I came in, I didn't put it on the very edge of the ribbon with the understanding that I was gonna be able to almost like press it to the edge and in an effort to try to minimize some of the mess, okay? So now we've got this wrapped around our spine and I'm just gonna take my scissors and come along here and trim it off flush with the top and the bottom of our booklet. And there you have it. We now have our sweet little activity booklet ready to hand out for Halloween. And we've got our little Would You Rather game. We've got a Let's Count with Count Dracula, some really fun riddles. One of them says, I am part man and part monster. I have a great sense of smell. I love the full moon. I howl at the night sky. What am I? <laughs> and so I thought this would be really fun. We've got our witchy writing prompts here and a place to house our sweet little pencil. And I think this is a really nice little sugar alternative treat to hand out for Halloween. And I've made enough to hand out to all of his classmates. I wanted to point out a couple things. I, um, on some of them, I used a piece of flannel scrap, just some flannel material to wrap around the spine. On others, I used a different piece of ribbon. I felt like this was a little too thin, so I wanted to go something wider. I would say use something that's at least an inch wide and preferably an inch and a quarter wide. That seems to be about the right size to wrap these with. If you wanted to hand out something like this, but you didn't want it to be the full booklet, these little printouts that are available in the cutting guide would be great to just simply staple together or if let's say you don't have the long arm stapler but you wanted to do something like this. I would take one of these booklets that again we cut down to five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths and maybe cut a cover piece for it that's six and a quarter by four and a quarter. Place it over the top, go ahead and staple it in the center, fold it over. You could put some stickers on it, you could put a pocket inside with some stickers included, you could simply tie the pencil on top of that little booklet package, and this would make a really great little thing to hand out for Halloween as well. Maybe have a small bowl of these made up, have them ready for when trick-or-treaters come as an alternative for those trick-or-treaters that may have allergies or who may not be able to have sugar. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Please be sure and hop on over to all the other contributors' channels and check out all the goodies they're making. This is week four, and I am blown away by the talent and creativity in this group. I knew it was an amazing group and I felt really lucky to even be a part of it to begin with. But oh my goodness, as each week goes by, I'm even more impressed um, than the week before. So please be sure to check out all of the things that they're making. Make sure that you've subscribed and hit the bell notifications for their channels as well so that you can see the other things they're making. All of them produce other amazing content outside of the Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022 collab. And they are really, really talented, like I said.
In addition, please be sure and click on that hyperlink, the hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022, so that you can see other people that are contributing that may not be a part of the full 13 weeks of Halloween contributors that are listed below. And if you are inspired to make something of your own or to recreate one of the projects that you've seen on my channel or any of the other channels that are participating in this, please feel free to do so and just make sure that you're tagging us in that by using that hashtag Sandy's 13 Frights Before Halloween 2022 and it will pop up in the search again as well so that other people can see your makes or what your take is on maybe one of the tutorials that you've seen. All right, y'all, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope that you are being kind to yourselves and I hope you're finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.